Paul, the Apostle to the Gentiles. Foremost among those called to preach the gospel of Christ stands the Apostle Paul, to every minister an example of loyalty, devotion, and untiring effort. His experiences and his instruction regarding the sacredness of the minister's work are a source of help and inspiration to those engaged in the gospel ministry. Before his conversion, Paul was a bitter persecutor of the followers of Christ. But at the gate of Damascus, a voice spoke to him. Light from heaven shone into his soul. And in the revelation that there came to him of the crucified one, he beheld that which changed the whole current of his life. Henceforth, love for the Lord of glory, whom he had so relentlessly persecuted in person of his saints, came before all else. To him had been given the ministry of making known the mystery which had been kept secret since the world began. Romans 16:25. He is a chosen vessel unto me, declared the angel who appeared to Ananias, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Acts 9.15 And throughout his long term of service, Paul never faltered in his allegiance to the Savior. I count not myself to have apprehended, he wrote to the Philippians, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press it toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. Philippians 3, 13, 14. Paul's life was a life of intense and varied activities. From city to city, from country to country, he journeyed, telling the story of the cross, winning converts to the gospel, and establishing churches. For these churches he had a constant care, and he wrote many letters of instruction to them. At times he worked at his trade to earn his daily bread. But in all the busy activity in his life, he never lost sight of the one great purpose to press toward the mark of his high calling. Paul carried with him the atmosphere of heaven. All who associated with him felt the influence of his union with Christ. The fact that his own life exemplified the truth he proclaimed gave convincing power to his preaching. Here lies the power of the truth. The unstudied, unconscious influence of a holy life is the most convincing sermon that can be given in favor of Christianity. Argument, even when unanswerable, may provoke only opposition, but a godly example has a power that is impossible wholly to resist. The apostle's heart burned with love for sinners, and he put all his energies into the work of soul winning. There never lived a more self-denying, persevering worker. The blessings he received, the prize, there's so many advantages to be used in blessing others. He lost no opportunity of speaking of the Savior, of helping those in trouble. Wherever he could find a hearing, he sought to counteract wrong and to turn the feet of men and women into the path of righteousness. Paul never forgot the responsibility resting on him as a minister of Christ, or that if souls were lost through unfaithfulness on his part, God would hold him accountable. I take you to record this day, he declared, that I am pure from the blood of all men. Acts 20, 26. Whereof I am made a minister, he said of the gospel, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Colossians 1, 25 to 29. These words present before the work of, for Christ a high standard of attainment, Yet this standard all can reach who, putting themselves under the control of the great teacher, learn daily in the school of Christ. The power of God's command is limitless, and the minister who in his great need shuts himself in with the Lord may be assured that he will receive that which will be to his hearers a savor of life unto life. Paul's writings show that the gospel minister should be an example of the truths that he teaches, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. To Titus he wrote, Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech, 
that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Titus 2, 6 to 8. Of his own work, he has left us a picture in his letter to the Corinthian believers. In all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich. 2 Corinthians 6, 4-10 Paul's heart was filled with a deep abiding sense of his responsibility, and he labored in close communion with him who is the fountain of justice, mercy, and truth. He clung to the cross of Christ as his only guarantee of success. The love of the Savior was the undying motive that upheld him in his conflicts with self and in his struggle against evil, as in the service of Christ he pressed forward against the unfriendliness of the world and the opposition of his enemies. What the church needs in these days of peril is an army of workers who, like Paul, have educated themselves for usefulness, who have a deep experience in the things of God, and who are filled with earnestness and zeal. Sanctified, self-sacrificing men are needed, men who are brave and true, men in whose hearts Christ has formed the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27, and who with lips touched with holy fire will preach the word, 2 Timothy 4.2 For the want of such workers, the cause of God languishes, and fatal errors, like a deadly poison, taint the morals and blight the hopes of a large part of the human race. As the faithful, toil-worn standard-bearers are offering up their lives for the truth's sake, who will come forward to take their place? Will our young men accept the holy trust at the hand of their fathers? Are they preparing to fill the vacancies made by the death of the faithful? Will the apostles' charge be heeded? the call to duty be heard amid the incitements to selfishness and ambition that elude the youth? 